everyone. Thank you. My name is Mary Brassler. A quick introduction. I've been working with BlackBot for a year, a little over a year. Prior to joining BlackBot's team, I worked at a school. I was um, in the communications department and also worked on the data. And so I've seen various stages of this software for about 15 years. I've grown through the, the changes and I understand your shoes and yes, there's kind of a learning curve, but once you're there, it's going to be great because this product is fantastic. It's all integrated and we're trying to get all the messaging, all the information for parents and students in one place. So it is a great experience for the um, parents as well. So I'll be sharing with you what you as the teacher are going to be doing, but also um, give you some insight on what the parents and students see. You know, there's not a whole lot of difference. That's what I love about the product. What you see is what your parents see, so you can help them. I am uh, from this region. I have grown up here. I was born and raised in Albuquerque, so I love this area. I have two children of my own. I just graduated my um, youngest from high school. I didn't graduate. He graduated. And so now I'm entering another stage of my own life. You know, what do I do now that the children are out of the house? So it's exciting times. Um, Everyone was able to log in, I noticed, right? And I think um, you, the faculty member, land on this page right here. Can we all be on the same page? I know some of you were browsing ahead, and that's super. I appreciate your interest and wanting to know more. Inquiry is great. So what this page is about um, is called My Day. You landed on My Day. And we just think this is perfect for teachers to land on, just because it's kind of like command center. It's a control panel, and you can get to a lot of places from here. Before we dive into my day, though, I want to point out a few things up in the upper right-hand corner. <coughs> important, too, and I saw some of you traveling there. When you log in, the system knows who you are. So if you, anybody wearing multiple hats, are you also a teacher and a parent here? So it knows, you know. Um, some of you are just faculty, which is perfectly fine. Some of you wear that dual hat in which case you would have to change. When you log in, you have to say, am I looking at the website right now because I'm a teacher, or am I looking at the website now because I want to be a parent? If you're an alum, you know, the system's going to know that too. So if you're teaching and you also went to Hope in the previous years, it's going to give you some alumni perspective as well. The drop-down menu under your name, the very first thing you see is profile click on profile that is the information the school has on you right this is just for your viewing you know we don't share all of this information with the world or you know your parents or your students but you can see the information the school knows about you so if there's something that needs to be edited if you've moved if your phone number changed or you got rid of a certain phone you have these little icons here pencils <coughs> that gives you the ability to edit you just want to edit your phone number or edit your address, edit an email. You also have X's. X's delete things, and that's consistent throughout the system. Pencils allow you to edit and change. X's allow you to remove. And the school is going to work on those um, photos for you. You don't have to worry about that. Those are all the school photos you take. <laughs> your profile, that's all the information about you. Everybody has a profile. Parents log in, they have a profile. Students log in, they have a profile. All right. The next thing I want to show you is settings. It's also in that drop down menu under your name. Um, what you see here on the first page is login settings. You'll see this piece at the bottom, a starting page. We have you starting on my day. That's, again, what I think is the best choice for our teachers. You have some other choices. We're going to show you what resources is about. We'll show you what the assignment center is. But again, I think as a faculty member, you're just going to want to leave it at my day. But you have some options. The notifications tab, this system is awesome. It allows people to opt in and receive a notification when something on the website has been posted. So um, we're going to be walking through, but you, the teacher, can make an announcement, for example, for your students in your class. Hey, don't forget the field trip. Don't forget to bring such and such to class tomorrow or something like that. Um, people can opt in to receive a text 
notification or receive an email notification saying, hey, something new has been added to the website. The reason it's opt-in only is because the school can't set up your texting. You know, not everyone has a smartphone. Not everyone wants to use their smartphone for a notification. Maybe they want to use the email. Maybe they need both. But the key here is we're going to have to direct, um, especially the parents. You know, if they want to be notified that something's been added to your class page, for example, they're going to have to come to this notifications area and set that up. Okay. Privacy. Um, I've been working with the school. They've gone through great lengths to protect privacy, especially for everyone, teachers, parents, students. And they've locked it down really tight. You know, if I'm a parent and I log in, the only thing I'm going to see about faculty members is an email, um, your picture, and your job title. You know, it's very, and your name, of course. But you can see on your privacy tab, if you see a, a check mark next to a box, that means we're, we're showing, we're displaying that information to these individuals. So when a student logs in, what do they see about you? They see your name, they're going to see your photo, they're going to see your email and your job title. You, know, you as an individual can make your own decisions on that privacy setting. You can change those check marks if you want. But this is what you're seeing now is what the school established. So ask yourself when you come to this privacy tab, what do I want to share with my students or any student at the school? Do we click on teacher? And, and you can click on teacher, yeah. And ask yourself, what do I want to share to my colleagues? You know, you could certainly check mark a few more things if you want to share a home phone or something like that. We're leaving that up to you. Same thing, what do I, an individual, want to share with the parent community? What do I want to share with the alums and the coaches? So you can go through each of these tabs when you have some time and just determine. Again, everything's set right now with just the name, your email, and your job title, and your phone. I don't see my last name. So it's supposed to be on there. It's a given. It's given. Yeah. Your nickname is always an option. You know, your, your Mr. or your junior titles, those are options. But yeah, your first name and last name is a given. That's going to be always there. <laughs> So all of that on the privacy tab. I do not recommend that you click this. Please don't click the do not include my name because that, you know, this data is also going to populate the brand new website that Hope is working on, right? And on the public piece, you know, the marketing piece that says, hey, this is why your child needs to come to the school. You know, look at our dynamic faculty staff members. You know, if you, if you choose to not share that information, it looks kind of bad, right? So. Yeah, just work on these boxes here. Okay, so that's all under settings. And your parents see this? Students have the same tab. Anybody who logs into the system has their own profile. That's the information about themselves and they can work on their own settings as well. If you click here, the getting started, you saw this when you first logged in for the first time. I know you're gonna get tired of seeing it. You're going to check that box and say, okay, I'm good. But it's a, it's a self-guided tutorial, and it'll walk you through exactly what I just talked about, step by step. If you, what, what did she say again about that profile? What did she say again about my settings? You can certainly um, just have a self-guided tutorial and it'll walk you through the same thing. As always in your menu, even if you check and make it go away. And then the other piece to just remember is you can always sign out. But, sorry. Yeah, let's, yeah, this is just a good idea. When you're done for the day, sign up. Um, the other piece to show you up in the upper right-hand corner is the persona picker. Again, if you're a parent and a faculty, you'll have to wear, you know, whatever hat you want to look at. That if you change from faculty to parent, you know, this navigation here in the gray or under the green one changes just a bit. Let's go ahead and talk about directories. Perfect. Tammy, you're just awesome. She's been through enough of these. She knows. Where are we going, Mary? So we have three directories here. Students, uh, a parent, and faculty, and staff. You, um, we opened up the student directory. You can see these are all the students at the school. Uh, we're going to have student photos. 
you can click on more information and get details. You know, who are the students' parents, you know, the parent phone numbers, the emails. You see this because you're teachers and this is important for part of your job. You need to be able to have access to this. Over here on the right, each profile has options. And if you click on a contact card, contact card and profile are synonymous. They're the same thing. And now you're looking at the information the school has on this particular parent, this particular student. So it'll, even if we work at the mode school, it'll still pull out the elementary and high school. Exactly. Or, uh, all students, yep. All parents, regardless okay. of where they are. So it's like you're, you know, it's an online directory. And it is behind the password. And you, the teachers, can see a lot of information. We certainly haven't opened up all this information to, to parents and students, but you, the teachers, have this access. If you go through here, you know, maybe there's a group of parents you're working with on a regular basis, maybe an extracurricular kind of thing or an athletic option. Um, you can certainly add an individual you find in the directory to your own contacts. Um, when you add a contact, it's creating your own personal online directory phone book, right? So when you add a contact, you can then go to my contacts and there's those individuals you've added. So it's just kind of a nice way to collect a group of individuals you're constantly talking with, communicating with, and putting them in a little private phone book for you. And it's easy enough to remove those contacts. When you're done, you don't need them anymore in your private phone book, just remove. Okay, you can sort through your directories here in this drop-down menu. It's the same as in the directories up in the upper navigation as well. All right. You can also look at a directory in a grid view. It just puts them side by side. This is a list view, and in the grid view, you can just you know, see more at a glance. And you have filters here. You know, we've included zip codes. That's what parents can see. That's why we put that filter in there for the zip code. But you can also filter by the um, grade or by the class year. Just note that if you start using those filters and then you go back to the page and you're like, I don't see anything anymore, it's probably because you selected a filter and you need to turn it off. Change it to all or just turn off the filters that you applied. Usually that's the challenge. When you're not seeing anything, it's probably the filter on the right. Okay, so that's the directories. Everybody sees these, just to a different degree. Let's go ahead and click on calendar. Uh, your calendar is an aggregate of everything you're doing at the school. You know, we're still working on populating the calendar. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we're working on. We still have 17 days. Yes. <laughs> yes, and counting. Um, but it's an aggregate, again. It's going to show assignments as you post them. It's going to show your schedule as your schedule comes out. Some of you don't have that quite worked out either. Um, if you're a coach, and in charge of an athletic team, it's going to show the games you're coaching, class events, group events. We have groups. Groups are like extracurricular activities, and you, maybe you're going to be the leader of this group, or if, again, you're um, an advisor in some capacity, or you're part of a community group. Um, that's what shows up in groups. If you're a parent, you're going to have a section right here that says, you know, my, it's going to have your child's name and their calendar. So again, it's an aggregate of whatever you have available to you at the school at this current moment in time. And then the school calendars, those are the ones we're still working on, we're setting up. Should I close this? Is it yes, no, starting? <laughs> we're listening. <laughs> we're going, oh, okay, cool. <clears throat> so if all my kind of half are in there yet, right? Do I just wait? You should wait. Okay. What has missing? Um, NHS and the system track out. Okay. So yeah. There are some pieces we're still working on. Exactly. Athletics we're still working on. And, and, yeah. School dude. We're integrating all the information in school dude and bringing it over. So, you know, very soon you'll be seeing a lot more color here. You can unselect if you don't need to see your schedule, you know your schedule, and you just want to look at the calendar for the other things. You can unselect any of these boxes and change the view. The nice thing here, too, is maybe you go ahead and you unselect some items, right? You can save that view. 
maybe you like that view the best, but then you have to go back and see everything going on again. You can always come and, um, I would say, unselect the boxes, save that view, then come back and show everything. And then if you want to, you can just restore that same view. So it's just, you know, if you're trying to deal with making appointments or figuring out where you need to be at what time, you have a few options there. You can travel through time, forward and backward. If you don't like the calendar and a grid view, maybe you prefer a list view, that's certainly an option as well. Um, this little box with the arrow pointing down, that's an expansion tool. We try to keep the calendar tight and concise. So everything's just one line, but if you need more details and it's clear that something's getting truncated, you can certainly click on the expand view. And if you really must, there is a print feature. You can certainly um, print your calendar in black and white, in color, landscape, portrait, all those options are available to you as well. Let's see. Um, these little carrots here on the side, Notice if you click on them, it expands the view down and you have some other choices there as well to either select or not select. This is what I want to see, I don't want to see. Uh, the other piece on the calendar that you have as teachers, you know, parents and students do not, you're going to see um, add a discussion, add an assessment, add assignment. We're going to talk through all of that really shortly here, but that's all connected to your class pages. So. When you're on your calendar, you can still add and do things here for your classes as well. Um, the news option, we're populating that. You know, as new stories come in for the school year, you know, these students did this remarkably well. Our athletes did fantastic opening season. You know, that kind of stuff will be displaying here. Everybody sees news. Resources is a very important piece to click on. This is static information. This is information you need to know, you know, throughout the school year. Maybe you don't need it on a daily basis. It's not part of your classroom. You know, it's not part of your dealings with parents and students, but it's information you're going to need at some point. Like handbooks is a perfect example of something to put on a resource board, and you'll find that here. Um, Pam has created Blackboard user guides for you. Everything we're going to be covering today, everything in that packet you received, is right here. You can also access it just as a PDF online. So the idea is to get away from, you know, sending information out via email and just have everything here at your fingertips when you want it, when you need it. So definitely, you know, these are exactly what your um, handout is. Okay, if you go back, there's an HR resource board for you, the faculty member. Um, again, Pam mentioned you guys are still working on a policy for the lesson plans. And they'll go through that later in the year. Um, you're a teacher at the school. You have, um, you're not a coach. Maybe you're just a teacher. You're just a teacher. I put that very um, lightly. Um, but you want to follow, perhaps you know a lot of your students in your class are having an important game this weekend and you just want to find out some details when that game is. You could search for them in this group finder. Just because you don't belong to an athletic team or you're not a member of that team, you can still find information on them. And so we're going to populate all that information in the next few weeks. Uh, you can also search for other people's classes, too, I think. Um, let's see here. You have reports. As a teacher, you're going to have a lot of reports, and we'll show you how to access them. But just know um, there's a view all your reports also on your resource page. Okay, so parents, students, teachers, non-teaching staff, they all see resources, news, calendar, and directories. It's no different. It's just all there, all laid out the same, too. The next items on that navigation, you have groups. And again, we're still developing groups. As groups develop, you may become, you may see more of them. If you're a coach and your team is populated, then that's going to be in groups. If you're a leader of an activity group, that's going to be under groups. And then the other piece is your classes. As the schedules are, are completed, you're going to see the option to find your class that you are teaching. We're impersonating Kindrel because um, we have the elementary school set up. They're working okay. 
as a teacher you can use that drop down menu on your classes and just click on your specific section you're working on or your specific page when you select a class from the drop down menu what you see is what we call a bulletin board everybody's got a bulletin board everybody has the topics everybody has all of this the bulletin board is the very first thing your students see it's the very first thing your parents see when they log in and go to your class page so it's important to have like a welcome you know here's what we're going to accomplish this year we're so excited to have your students you know have some kind of nice welcome images are always helpful right it catches your eye but granted this is elementary school <laughs> and you guys are older children you might have a different picture but on your bulletin board is, is the idea behind the bulletin board is just like in your classroom if you were to have a bulletin board and important information what would you put on it so you could have downloads you know if there's something that your students need to have access to year-round it'd be a good idea to go ahead and add it you could certainly have a syllabus you could certainly post your expectations a rubric if you're using that you have lots of options on your bulletin board you can have links you know if there's a, a site that you want students to be visiting on a regular basis perhaps to help with understanding what you're teaching you can certainly add those announcements are a good idea um, we'll go through how all of this is set up but announcements would be something like okay don't forget next week we're doing this or hey just a reminder heads up be prepared we're having a big major test coming or a major papers coming up so announcements is one of those things you can opt in to receive a notification on remember again this is what parents see the very first time when they go to your course page it's what students see the very first time when they go to your course page the only difference between this view and their view is this tiny little button on the right. So if you enter edit mode, it looks like this. This is like a page layout. This is how you decide where you're going to put items on your bulletin board. You're going to have a list of um, items here on the left. You can choose your layout if you don't like the wide left and skinny right you can certainly change it maybe three columns works for you better you have a few options to change the layout and then um, these are what we call content types so you have a, a bunch of options there's your grading rubric there's your expectations we've already dragged over syllabus so it's not displaying here but when you click on any of these content types on the left and drag it over you'll see that um, kind of dotted line and you can put it wherever you want on the page you can move things around right notice your cursor changes from an arrow to that crosshairs that's you just you just grab a content type and, and rearrange however you want yes are we able to like cop for those of us that teach from multiple with the same course copy and paste it to each class or do we have to redo it you have if you're teaching multiple sections I'm sorry you're gonna have to create a bulletin board for each section each class you can share the content if you create a welcome for one you could share it with the others especially if it's the same thing if you have downloads if you have links you know if you have um, syllabus and it's the same for all your sections you can share between but you will have to create a bulletin board for each section So if it's a shared thing, does that pop up on the other one? Will it look just like this? Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, I'm going to show you all about those um, how to share content. So mm -hmm. again, everything on the left. If you have a YouTube video you want to put on your page, that's what that embed content type is for. Um, go ahead and go to YouTube and grab that shared um, information. That the you can share and then you get the embedded code you just copy and paste it and then it's embedded right there on the page and then you just have some design elements if you want to put space or horizontal lines to break up the page somehow as you're building your pages and working on what you want on here you have this option here in the bottom in the black bar preview that page you know and you can look at it is that looking like I think it should oh let me move something let me add something you can always go back and forth as you're building and putting content on the page go ahead and preview it see what it looks like when you're happy then you can publish it and then it'll be shared with your students and parents. 
Let's go ahead and, um, again, pencils allow you to edit, right? Um, most of the things that have text look like a box like this. You can copy and paste. If you already have something established, you can certainly just um, copy and paste it in there. You can write it out. You can type it out brand new. This is kind of like the Word um, document. You can center, bold, italicize. If you need to make a hyperlink, like maybe it's an email address or a link to a page, you just you know select the text in within the text. Poor Tammy. <laughs> and then you have this link right here. It's, yeah, and like that. There we go. It's that insert edit link. And it can either be an email or it can just be a website. Okay, you can always add a picture when you add a photo with any of these items, you know. You need to have that photo available on your hard drive first. You can't go to like the internet and find a photo and have it grabbed from there. It has to be already an image that you've saved somewhere on your um, internal drive. And then save, and there you go. Um, downloads work, you know, whenever you see the plus add, that's how you would add a download, for example. Right? When you see a little red asterisk, they're tiny and they're hiding, but it's required. You have to have a title in order to add a download. You have to publish a date when you add a download. You can always work in the future. You don't, you know, the, the default date is going to be today's date. But if you just want to maybe set things up for next semester or maybe not until October, you're not going to cover something. Because certainly if you have time now, work for the future and publish in the future, something like that. And you can expire. You know, maybe this download is only going to be relevant in your class for a month or maybe a couple of weeks. You can expire it and then the system will just automatically make it go away when you're done. When something expires, it doesn't just completely disappear. You can always bring it back. Maybe it's going to be relevant, you know, next year or next semester. You can always, you don't have to re-add it. Just come back and, and give it a more current published date. If this download is appropriate for all the sections you're teaching or another class you're teaching, you have this button right here, Add More. When you add more, it's going to show all the other classes you're responsible for, and you can select know all of them or just one of them whatever you like and then you hit the apply if your sections are broken up and meeting on different days you know you can publish them publish this information on a different day it doesn't have to be the same for each class maybe you're not going to cover this download until the next week in one class but this week you're covering it so you have options when you can publish your information as you finish and complete, you can just save and add another download or save and go back to your page. When you're in downloads, you also have this option here. It's an organizational chart kind of image. Click on that. And you can organize your downloads in categories. You know, maybe this is um, October downloads and September downloads or something like that. You can always add a subcategory to your downloads to just organize them in a different way. Um, this is the syllabus. It's simply, you know, you can have a link for your syllabus if you've already created a document and you love it, just add it as a download. Or you can just add it as text. It's up to you. You have some choices. Um, photos. You can go ahead and click on photos. One word of caution about photos. Don't put fat files because they're just going to take a long time to render. You know, you've all been to sites, I'm sure, where there's a beautiful photo, but it's taking five hours to load because it's just a big file. It's like 60 megabytes fat. So if you're going to share photos, you know, either of the students doing something from your class or what have you, just kind of be mindful of how that image was taken and perhaps it needs a little downsizing so that it'll load quicker and not look broken all the time or keep that wheel spinning because you can't figure out what you're doing. But it's easy enough. You just find the photos again from your um, hard drive and load them here. You can have as many as you want. Um, you do need an album title, album, you know, photo album, something like that. Any of these content types, you know, if they're not appropriate for your page, don't worry about it. You don't have to have them on there. Just X out the content type. 
on the pencil. I want to just click here, Tammy. <laughs> Um, let's talk about announcements. Again, announcements are one of those pieces that people can opt in to receive a notification. You, the teacher, are going to have regular announcements for your students and parents, right? They can opt in and receive, hey, Mr. So-and-so has just added an announcement. When you add an announcement to your page, that little green check mark in the upper right-hand corner is important. That's the one that's going to um, dictate whether it goes out as a text or an email or whether, you know, maybe you're making an announcement that's not worthy of a notification. You have that option to just not even send out that notification. So if it's important, you want people to not forget, then go ahead and keep that box green checked. But if it's just, you know, a simple announcement, you're just going to cover it in class the next day, then it is not worthy of a, no of a notification. You definitely have to have a headline. And you definitely have to publish. This would be details over your announcement, right? One thing to note on announcements, because it's an option to send out as a text, right? You, it's going to be the current point in time. If you're working in the future, you know, and you're a night owl maybe, and you're doing this at, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and you don't put in a time, and you just leave at the current moment, then all those parents are going to receive a notification at 2 a.m. in the morning, and they're going to be really unhappy. So just keep that in the back of your mind. If you're posting an announcement, just make sure, you know, if the current moment in time is appropriate, great, no worry. But if you're working in the future, setting this up for next week, next month, put in a time, just because the system will send it, you know, at midnight. So if you post a date in the future, like, you know, November 1, it's going to go out November 1 at midnight, and people are going to go, I thought that was an Amber Alert. Why am I getting notification of a field trip five weeks from now? Yeah. Okay. And again, the same option, always, on any of these content types. If it's appropriate with your other sections, your other classes, just add more and find it, and then choose which one it's appropriate for. Change the dates if needed. Okay, I think links are pretty self-explanatory. We can go ahead and add a link, right? You have to have a URL, you have to have a title. This option right here that says none at the moment, this is going to, um, when the new site launches, it's going to show some other options. Maybe you want to direct people to a specific new page on the website. You certainly, you don't have to type in the URL, you just select it from the drop-down menu. And you can have photos on your links if you want. Um, you know, sometimes when you go to a site, the link, when you're just looking at it, is black, and then you hover over it, maybe changes the image or changes color to black to red. That's what these two options are for you. You can get fancy if you like. You don't have to have a photo on your link, but you could. All right, that's links. And links, just like downloads, have that organization. If you want to organize all the various links, you can always so here. Um, these little gears, you can always look for little gears. You know, if you want this section not labeled downloads, that doesn't make sense to everybody. You know, what's the point in showing downloads, right? You can certainly give it a title. You know, don't forget, or these are important documents. You can, you can name like the title of each section of your page, something if you like. If you see it here, that's just, um, if we go ahead and preview. Right, like right now it says links. This is a links category because it was brought over as links. It doesn't have to say links. It could just say these are important, important links maybe, or resources. You could rename it. It doesn't have to say announcements. It could just say don't forget. You know, and that's what those gears will do. They'll change these category titles for you. So that's the bulletin board. My advice on your bulletin board is keep it very simple. Don't bog it down with a lot of information. Again, it's the parent's first experience with your class. It's the student's first experience. So put the important pieces up there. This is what we expect. This is what we're going to do. But it's not where you put in the nitty gritty of your class. It's kind of like the bulletin board. Make it look pleasing. Make people want to stay engaged. Not just like, oh my gosh, that's just too much. 
you have the option to bring over any of these content types. You only get the option to bring over text one time. You know, you can bring over news one time, downloads one time. Once it's over here on the right, it's no longer here in this column to choose from and bring over. Let's go out of here, back to our bulletin board, right? Let's talk about topics next. Topics is where you get down into the nitty gritty of your class. It's your units of study, right? It's where you can drill down and actually present the deep dive into your subject matter. You can have as many topics on your page as you want. There's no problem there. Um, you can certainly work in the future if you're working on a unit of study in October, maybe on, on uh, neurotransmitters. You know, you can certainly work ahead and, and work on it as you have time. Your topics, you know, you can display active to you if you're working on something in the future. They're hiding until you select this box. You know, you can always expire a topic. Maybe you've already studied this enough and you just don't want it on your page anymore. You can certainly expire topics. Let's go ahead and create a topic. You'll see it's just like creating a bulletin board. You're going to have to have a title. You have the, it's a good idea to have a picture for a topic. Otherwise, it's just a blank you know, image like this. And you can always choose a different layout. Yep. Scrolling down. The nice thing about topics, again, your units of study. You can share them with your colleagues if you want. You know, maybe there's a group of you working together, collaborating on something. You can certainly just kind of divvy up the duties kind of idea. I'll take care of this, you take care of that, perhaps. You can share with one of your own class sections or one of your colleague sections. You can certainly do that. Here's a list of all your colleagues. Um, if you share with a particular colleague on a specific class, right, you have the option to allow that colleague of your to edit this topic. You know, maybe it's truly collaborative. Maybe you're just sharing. You don't want them to edit. You don't want them to change your work. You're just willing to share your work. So you have some choices there. Maybe you don't have a specific colleague in mind. Maybe you're just going to put it in what we call the topic bank. You know, maybe someone's created a great topic. Why reinvent the wheel? Just, you know, if they've added it to the topic bank, you can use it. Like with anything else in the system, you can certainly publish expire, add more, right? These are your own classes again. All right, we created a topic. When you save and start adding materials, you can always come back, edit a pencil. It looks exactly like a bulletin board layout idea. All your content types are here on the left. You click on them and you drag them over to the right and place them on the page wherever you want. Notice, though, that if I drag over photos, for example, I can have more than one box of photos. I can have numerous boxes of photos. I can have numerous downloads, numerous links, whatever you need to use, however many times to take that deeper dive into the topic matter, you can use it on the page. Um, maybe we should, have we, have we logged into my site yet? Probably have it open, but not logged in. Let me show you. Um, I have a demo site. Hang on, just one, one moment. We'll get away from the elementary school. I love the owls, though, right? Kendall is doing great things with owls.
my demo site, you saw the bulletin board. Now we're looking at um, biology topics. And again, my topics are units of study. So I'm going to have my students studying neurotransmitters. I'm going to have them study all these different pieces. Um, I can always edit these. Let's go ahead and before we edit, let's click on neurotransmitters. Right? When a student clicks on one of the topics you've created, here's where you have all the pieces of content that you've added. This here, the function of neurotransmitters, that's an embedded YouTube, right? Um, this is just a photo. This is a photo. Um, I think this is, I'm not sure what that is. And you can have text. What I wanted to show you was the discussion. This is unique to a topic. You can't put a discussion on your bulletin board, but you can put it on your topic. So what the discussion does is it allows you to post a question to your students. You know, what do you think about? Uh, we're going to be working on. You know, any ideas how you want to explore that? You just pose a question here, and then your students have the option to go ahead and make a comment. You know, and then all the students in the class see that comment. I guess you're opening it up to parents too. They might see that and could maybe make a comment. So that's the discussion. If we go back, same thing with like when you're setting up your bulletin board, you can always see what it looks like and come back and make some changes. Pencils mean you can edit. When you drag over a discussion, where is our discussion? Well, yeah, go ahead and drag over another one. That's fine. There it is. You know, you don't have any options. There's no adding text or anything. That's because it's just a content type. And then on your bulletin board, that's, I mean, on your topic, that's where you pose your question. So that's just a little unique just to the topic page. Um, what else is unique? I think if we scroll down here, the left side. I think everything else, all these other types of content are the same as we've been walking through. They work the same way as your bulletin board. So your bulletin board, short and sweet, concise, you know, absorbed quickly, not a whole lot of information, just, you know, what do I need to know today, you know, this week. And then your topics are your units of study, the deep dive into whatever it is you want to present. Do you guys have any questions so far? If you're looking at this image, you know, you can always, um, right now we're on this kind of page layout icon, there's this gear image. You can always change the layout. You're working here and you're deciding, you know what, that layout really isn't what I wanted. You can change it, just click on the edit the settings, and it takes you back to that original page when you first added that topic. You can edit as needed. Let me change the photo if you don't like it, something like that. If we go back, so we're on our topics. Again, you can have as many as you want. If you don't like this topic, you can always just remove it entirely. It might be wiser just to expire it and bring it back when you're ready to deal with it again. On um, this little blue icon with the arrow coming out, that's just a link, you know, if you decide to share it later. Maybe not now, but maybe later. Share it, you know, private with somebody and then decide whether to add it to the topic bank. Let's say you're talking to one of your colleagues and they say, yeah, you can use my topic. It's like, well, how do I do that? That's this import button right here. The nice thing is you're doing a lot of work right now, setting all this stuff up. You know, the import feature is also for next year. Why reinvent the wheel? Just bring in things next year, what you already used this <coughs> current year. You can always import your own work that you've done already, but the um, import also brings up the topic thing. So if you talk to somebody and they say, oh yeah, use mine, that's what you do. You import and then find the teacher and the section where that is, and then you just simply go All right. Um, topic priority, you can't, you can't like say this is one, this is two, this is three. Um, all you can do is put a uh, priority as in, you know, what should be up here on the left-hand side, right? You can click and drag these topics as needed up and down the menu. Okay, we covered neurotransmitters last week. I'm going to leave it up for a few more weeks, but I'm going to move up the microscope because that's more important. But we're going to go work on amphibians. Notice, you know, it's got a future published date. It's not quite complete, kind of a prompt there for you. 
the reason you can't prioritize in like a, a normal sort order is because the whole entire website is web responsive design. If we go ahead and preview this topic page, and maybe Tammy can scrunch down. We're looking at this from a desktop view, right? What if someone logs in from their phone? You know, it's not like the information goes away, it's just stacked. And so your priority is going to just tell the system which way to stack those topics kind of idea. You know, the navigation didn't go away, it's just in those three bars up there. So the entire website is built this way. So whether you're on a tablet, whether you're on a smartphone, whether you're on a desktop, a laptop, it's going to just adjust appropriately so that you always see everything on the page. Um, yeah, I talked about active, future, expired. Any questions? Topics versus bulletin board? I think you guys got a good grasp, right? You just want your schedules in there. <laughs> okay, are we ready for a break? Sure. Okay. Let's do that. Well, well, you know what? How about five more minutes, 15 more minutes, and then we'll take a break. Let's talk about rosters. Let's go ahead and do that. Every class page you have <coughs> has a bulletin board, has a topic, right? And you also have this roster. <coughs> um, once those schedules are finished and finalized, you'll have a roster of all your students, right? You don't have to go to the directory to find information about your students. It's all right here on your roster. You know, you can still find out who your students' parents are, right? And how do we contact them? Should open. There we go. There's the parent, there's the email, you know, if there was a phone number, it would be there. Um, oh yeah, that's not, yeah. I think um, every student has a um, little button with their, with a little icon mm -hmm. of the image, right? If you want to find out about the student's progress in all of their courses, you could certainly click here on progress. You can see their schedule. You can see all kinds of things about your students in your class. Here we clicked on the progress page. This is kind of like the view a parent has. When they log in, they have a progress page, right? Uh, there we go. It's just taking some time to load. So on the progress page, you're going to see a list of you know the courses that student is in. Well, we're going to talk about this. This is the grade book. We'll talk about that shortly after our break. But it's just useful information. You could just, you know, kind of check out the student's schedule and see what else they're involved with and maybe help them with some problems or challenges they face. So on your roster, every student in your class, you'll be able to click on this little icon with a face and check out um, official notes. Maybe this child, we could talk about that really quick. Maybe you want to write an official note about your student. They did really marvelously on a test, or they just seem to be excelling for whatever reason, or maybe they don't quite, you know. Something you want to make an official note about, you can certainly do so by adding an official note. Compose an official note, right? Maybe it's a group of students in your class. You could certainly do that. Click on one of those official notes, and you could certainly include other individuals if you need to. You just need to type a few names, and they all start appearing. And you can choose from a drop-down menu. Helpful if you don't know how to spell someone's unique last name or first name, right? Mm -hmm. You don't just need to know the first few letters. And then um, the principals <coughs> have decided exactly uh, what kinds of comments we can. Maybe we should be back on your site, huh? Let's try that. Because mine's. Yeah, a demo site with lots of options. You guys have different options. On that list, um, under their profile, mm -hmm. you'll say if they have a problem, a possible medical problem, there is a red, mm -hmm. a red um, medical exactly. notification. So you can check on that too. Right. So here's a student. You can have the option, well, this is elementary again. I think you have a few more options in the upper school, actually. Um, but if you want to write an academic highlight, for example, you know, this got this um, specific student or group of students did really well in class today on something, you know, you could certainly make a note of that 
and then it's going to go out to your parents, students, teachers, and the advisor of that student. And so parents, when they log in, are going to see that an official note was written. This note could appear on the transcripts. So that's official notes. You can, you know, even if you didn't get to this from the roster, you could still click on official notes up in that green banner at the very top and compose a brand new note from here. And then you can see all the other various notes. And what's different from a positive note that is listed by Your the principals, each school has different um, notes that they can add, different official notes. So okay. the middle school, the elementary, the upper school. Yeah, the principals are all working on this. I'm sure you're going to see more options as the school gets closer to start. All right, let's go back to our roster. So again, lots of options available for each student in your class. If there's a conduct, you know, again, your principals are establishing consequences for disrespect or having a cell phone. You know, there's some infractions and, and all of this is getting worked on as well. But if you need to report such an infraction, you know, you're going to have to put in a date. Same idea, you find the student or the group of students that you're making this infraction conduct. Let me find the high school student. Yeah, Devin's, Devin's in trouble all the time. <laughs> Poor Devin. He tries so hard to, doesn't he? Does. <laughs> and my screen is not responding. We're, we're taxing it. It's just too much work. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're looking at Devin. We're going to make a con. You know, you can, you're going to see these, these icons, you're going to see these notices, they're all going to be similar. Wherever you get to, it's still the same screen. So yeah, you can find the student, you know, make a note of what time this infraction occurred and what kind of infraction is it, right? These are the ones the principals have set up. Yeah, select it. You know, description for parents and student eyes, right? What are we telling the parents happened? It could be very different than the confidential comments that you're telling the principal occur, right? So you have two boxes, basically. One for the parent consumption and one for the principals at the school. This one with the parents is required. This other one is not. You know, there was no difference. You know, it's just, you know, we caught them with the cell phone at the appropriate time. So that's that. If you have a group of students, that's why we have these placeholders here, rather than type out all the names, you know, so-and-so, maybe there's a group of students in trouble and having a fight. You know, you don't have to name each one again. You've already selected them up here. Just put in the placeholders and the system will generate for each student and send it to the appropriate parents. So, <coughs> like so it won't send like all the kids to each parent? No, it just the same, child. it's going to okay. filter out and send just to the parent that needs to see about their own child. Yeah. Yep. So that's adding a conduct. So there's conduct and there's official notes. So conduct is, you know, conduct, inappropriate behavior. Official notes is, you know, you guys are doing fantastic. We just want to acknowledge your effort. Yep. And you can do that for any child, any student all from the roster. One other thing to show you um, is this bold communication piece right here. Right? If you have an email that needs to go out to the parents, just giving you a reminder, this is important. Please, 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 you can send a bold communication. When you use the bold communication, there's just some tips. Please pay attention. Make sure you use the semicolon if you're going to use this area here. These are all the parent emails. You don't need to keep your own distribution group any longer. It's all pulling from their contact cards, their profiles. It's up to date. It's current. Don't create your own distribution groups. Use this system. This is a way to copy and paste into an email if you need to. If you're going to use this way, use the semicolon. 
to separate those addresses. You could also, if you're already in your Outlook, it's already opened, you're already available, just go ahead and click on open the list in my email client and then that'll open up your inbox and put those addresses in there automatically for you. So the key would be you have to be in Outlook already and then this button would work. All right, one thing too, if you're going to copy and paste the emails, never ever put them in the to field. This is not the recipient information. This should be a blind copy, right? The recipient should always be you. That way you have a record of exactly what you sent out to your parents and you always have it. It's gonna be in your inbox. The recipient is yourself. You know, the parent emails are the BCC emails. This way too a parent can't grab all those emails and start, you know, their own dialogue separate, you know, leave you out of the picture. Right? So, you know, when you send a bulk communication to all the parents, for example, in your class, just make sure you're communicating with them BCC. You are the recipient, so you have a, a example of exactly what you told them. Alright? So right here, bulk communication. And then over here on the right, you have a lot of reports. Always look for reports. You're going to see that pop up in other areas as well. It's usually on the right. Um, you can certainly run a report on your roster. You can run a report on other things there. When you have reports, it opens up a new window. It doesn't take you away from where you were. It just opens a new window. And this one, you don't have any drop-down menus above. But if you do have drop-down menus to select from, then you'll have to generate the report. But then it should display, and you can always print out most reports in a PDF or Word or an Excel spreadsheet. I had a question about communication. So in looking at this, I can view the roster of one class, like first period over, and I can do the bulk communication to parents. Is there any way to do bulk communication to all the sections I teach? Or do I have to go no, in? You have to go to each section. Mm -hmm. Right. I think the thinking there and the programming is just, yeah, probably too challenging, but then, you know, I don't know. No, there is no way to bulk communicate to all your sections. You would have to go to each roster for each class and then communicate that way. Good question, though. You can always search for, you know, if your class is, you know, too large. I don't think that's a problem, but you can certainly search for a student here and that's search feature that. Mary, here's a question. Since it's going through Outlook, mm -hmm. if she copy pastes and put that section into Outlook, then goes to her next section and copy pastes and then put that in, can she create Yeah, it? certainly to do that. Does. That's a great idea. Yep. Perfect. But yeah, from here, you can't grab all of your classes in one fell swoop. Can you do it if you add all of them to your My Contacts? And do a bulk email from your my contacts? No. Nope. Okay. No, nope. this is only going to be on your roster for your class page. Or your group page. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great questions. Okay, I think we need to go back to a course page and talk about assignments. Can we go back to yours for a second? Yeah, I think so. I know you guys love Kindles owls and things, but um, let's talk about this assignments tab. Assignments and this tab, the gradebook, they're very interrelated. Okay, assignments are of course exactly that. You're going to be assigning your students, read this chapter, you know, write this paper, make sure you watch this video, you know, all your assignments. You're going to have some choices on assignments. The principals are working on setting up some stuff behind the scenes. What you're looking at on my demo site is a bunch of assignments that I've created, right? They're kind of categorized, you know, you can have different categories of assignments to break down, you know, this long list that I'm sure is going to grow as time progresses. Also, um, how we got here was we clicked on assignments, right? And so down this column, you can see when you actually assigned that, made that assignment, and then you can see when you said this assignment was going to be done. And you also have this field if you need to change the publish. You know, you could certainly go in here and do that at this point. This column here, the red and the green and the 
yellow. You know, the yellow is saying, okay, um, students have turned in my assignment. I've graded one. I've got 21 to go, right? The red one is saying, okay, I need to get busy. I've been neglectful as a teacher. I need to grade my assignment. It's time. <coughs> and the green, of course, is saying, good job, teacher. You're doing a good job. So it's just kind of like a snapshot of your job and where you're at in the progress of things. Um, over here on the right hand column, we have assignments, assessments, and discussions. We'll go through each of those. You could also view things in a calendar view. I think my demo site's being goofy. You'd have to look at that on Kendall's site. Kendall's site. But you could look at it either in a list view, which is what you see here, or you can actually look at your assignments in a, in a grid on a calendar. Um, definitely look at your filters. You know, if something's not displaying, it's probably a filter here. You know, look for a future assignment, perhaps maybe it was a date range. So if you, you know you made that assignment and you can't find it, check your filters for sure. Or even just search. You know, this works really great. Um, let's go ahead and see how these all came about. We went to assignments and we added an assignment. When you add an assignment, you have that option up here in the upper right hand corner. This is, this is an assignment you want to notify everyone that is now posted and ready happening. Check that mark. You know, opposite to the announcement on your bulletin board, you know, that one's always checked and you have to remember to unselect it. This one's going to be always unselected and you have to remember to check it. I'm just the delivery person. I'm not the programmer. I don't know why. But that's the way it is. All right. You need a title. That's what goes in this big box. I guess it could be a really long title. <laughs> but then your description here, you know, maybe read chapter <coughs> one through five and then say, all right, maybe you only need to do the odd problems in math or something like that. So you can have a title and a description. Your types, those are the, um, the principles are creating assignment types appropriate to your particular school level, middle school, upper school. The type is how you're going to organize your assignments, so they are important. It's not a required field, but it's very important for organization and just helping you keep things organized. This piece right here, the attachments. <coughs> if you're creating an assignment and your students need a link to help them with this assignment, or they, you have a PDF file, a Word document, you want them to read and understand, that's part of the assignment. Here's where you add it. All right, if it's a link, just put in the URL. If it's a download, it's gonna prompt you to find it on your hard drive. So this piece right here, attachments, that's what you're providing to your students so that they can finish the assignment. Also okay. like a file of their yeah. actual assignment, so there's, you know, they will use it. Yeah, okay. you can do that too, absolutely. Um, this piece, this is the grade book part, and we're going to dive into the grade book. Just bear with me as we go through it. A grade book is, is like a grid. It's going to be a spreadsheet of all your assignments. So assignments are going to be going across the top. <coughs> And it, um, the titles, you know, sometimes your titles for assignments are long, so we can't put the whole title. That's why we kind of have like an abbreviation. You know, if this is homework, you might abbreviate it HW. You know, if this is um, class participation, CP. It's just kind of, um, you'll see how abbreviations work really soon. The max points and the factors, you know, if this assignment is worth 100 points, for example, then you put in 100. You know, it's just a regular daily assignment, it's a factor of one. If it's a major paper, you know, like half of your grade, maybe it's got a factor of 1.5 or 2 even. It's, you know, you can certainly decide. Each assignment can have its own values here. You can determine whether it even needs to be in the grade book. Maybe it's just, you know, let's, let's start out easy. Let's not make this hard on the students to begin with. You know, give them some chance to get used to the system. You don't have to add it to the grade book. You don't have to make it part of the cumulative grade, right? You can also provide something with extra credit, and then are you going to publish this grade? You know, teachers will be publishing the grades. Parents will have access to those grades. Students can have access to those grades. Is it worthy of publishing yet? 
this bottom part here, the file submission. If you're asking your students to give you a file, you know, please write this paper and turn it in online. That's what this piece is for. This is where you're asking the students to give you something back. If, if you're not asking them to do that, or they're just uh, reading, then just keep it at no file allowed. If you want them to give you a file online, then you need the on-campus submission. Okay? And then if they are giving you a file, how many? Is that just one file, one paper? Maybe it's two, a paper with, you know, pictures or something like that, you can choose. And then you can always say, okay, you're submitting a file, it's going to be late after midnight on this date, for example. And then, just like the other fields, you know, when are you going to assign it? How much time are you going to give your students to know the assignments here and work on it? You know, so, when is it assigned? That's the date the student's going to see it. And then, when is it due? So, you're going to give them two weeks, you're going to give them one week, just one day. That's entirely up to you. You can always work in the future. Since it has a notification, it holds that same concern, you know, thought. When are you gonna when are you gonna publish it? If it's in the future, then pick a time that's a good time to get that notification. And then when you publish it, that's how you're gonna publish it. You know, if it's ready now, go ahead and post it now. If you'd rather create the assignment and post it as soon as it's you know your assigned date right here, go ahead and choose that. Or if you're still working on it, trying to figure some stuff out, just don't publish it yet. Right. And if you're going to share this assignment with the other sections, you certainly can do that. And you can choose different dates and times for your other sections. Right. So, so far, so good, right? Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's look at a great book. For favor. A great book, when you click on great book, it's always going to open a brand new window. Let's think about it. Thinking about it. <laughs> it's Friday. I think the rain did something, right? Made all those <coughs> internet <laughs> bandwidths be wacky. So here's that spreadsheet of of sorts. You know, if you look across the top, this is one assignment. Here's another one. <coughs> Right? It's going across horizontally, chronologically in time. Right? Um, C L W K, you know, it's kind of Greek, but you know, it's gonna be a truncation of your assignment title. That's why the abbreviation, you can see HW, that's an abbreviation, MP is an abbreviation, major paper, um, C part, that's class participation. That's how those abbreviations for each assignment are kind of helping you know what it is. Notice that at the top, the title of every assignment is blue. It's a link. You can hover over it. Oh yeah, that assignment, right? That's not the one I want to look at. Or you can click on it, and it opens up. Go ahead and click on that one. That'd be great. You're just being slow. Okay. If you click on it, it's going to open up um, exactly what we saw when we added that assignment. <coughs> it's the same window, right? You can make some changes if needed. Maybe you need to go ahead and change um, some due dates or something like that. Okay, so this screen is the screen we saw when we added a brand new assignment. It's the same screen that you would get if you click on the top blue link for that assignment. And let's see, let's go ahead and, you know, navigating about on your gradebook. You can use your tab keys, you can use your, um, you can definitely use your mouse if you like. If you double click on any of these cells, it kind of activates it. You know, and you're looking at the student as you're working on um, assigning a grade for this individual on this assignment. You can certainly put in a uh, value here. You can mark a student's, you know, maybe they're exempt from this particular assignment. Maybe they turn it in, but it's incomplete and you want to give them a little more time or something you can indicate all of these pieces here and then you can make a comment here to just help you know remind you why did I give the student this grade 
make, this is all assignment dependent here. And we got there by double clicking on a cell for that grade. Yeah, you can save that slot. She's my star student, but okay, go ahead and. and oh, that was me, not me. <laughs> okay, good. So, you know, notice when you make comments, you know, and you hover over, there's like a red um, triangle. You can see, kind of hover around and see what you've done. As you add numeric values, you know, you can see it changing your cumulative grade over here. Notice, too, we have some that are red. Let's go ahead and talk about why they're red and how they became red. Let's look at display options. Every grade book you set up has its own display options. So you can, first off, group your assignments. If you want to put all your class participation in one section, and then you want to put all your quizzes together, you want to put all of your papers together, you can choose to do that. Group them by the assignment type, right? Or not. It's still going to be chronological in time, but you can group them together. You can choose whether to display your assignments by when you assign them or when they're actually due. Okay. That's up to you. You could also display just a range. You don't want to see all the assignments for the entire quarter or the entire semester. Maybe you just want to see a couple of weeks at a time. You can certainly choose that. And then your roster, you know, it's going to be automatically populated. So how do you want to see those students? By okay. their last name alphabetically listed, their first name alphabetically. You know, you want to start with Z. Go ahead and give Z some chance to be at the top of the list for a change. You could do that. You don't have to display the cumulative either. You could hide it. And then, remember I said there was a few scores that were red. That's because, you know, I put in a, give me a, a figure. I want to know, I want you to red, I, you, I want the grade book to show me when a student falls below a certain grade. You know, I've got this expectation, show me the students that are falling shy of that. And that's what makes them red on the grade book. You can certainly show the year cumulative or not. Scrolling down just a bit more on your display options. Um, you know, do you want students and parents seeing the cumulative? You can hide that as well. Right? These, you don't have the option to unselect. These are part of the, what the principals are deciding. And so, <coughs> you just know your parents and your students will be seeing your grades. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, when we had like a certain type of assignment, so like English, you have book reports, mm -hmm. you have essays, you have vocabulary, we were able to weight each of those mm -hmm. sections as mm -hmm. like, okay, so the book report is 20%. Yep. Are we still able to do that? Yep, we haven't <coughs> quite got there. Okay. Yeah, that's a great segue, absolutely. So this is, that first piece was just the display options and we're, you know, figuring out how we exactly want things to display here for us. Let's go ahead and, and just click on one of these students, my star student. As time progresses, you click on a student's name in your roster, you're going to see all your assignments that you've created and graded. <coughs> Yeah, but the student is blue, and you can see how they're performing with the class, which is red. You know, scrolling down this list, you can see the student specific grades. You can see any comments you wrote. Notice that your grade book is hiding. Let's go through that one more time. Let's cancel out here. Here we are in our grade book. Let's say it's time to talk to your students. Click on one of those student names. This window pops up, call Amy up to your desk and say, hey, Amy, here's your grades, you know, let's have a discussion. Let's show you where you're at right now. You show her everything, send her back to her desk and say, all right, next up, Stephen. You know, they're not going to see any of their classmates' information. You're just showing them information about themselves. Same thing like if you have parent-teacher conferences. You know, have your grade book open and say, all right. Let's talk about your child. They're doing wonderful. Or, you know, here's where they need a little extra support. You don't have to close and hide anything. You just have to click on that name and then move on. Pretty sweet, I think. All right. Let's talk about edit setup. This is really what you guys want to know. 
and again the principals are working you know and setting up some things in the background still and I believe we're going to have an in-service to go over some more you know school details but basically in each grade book you have you're going to have to decide as my grading system going to be consistent throughout the whole year or do I want to kind of um, change things around at the semester perhaps you know if you're going to go really easy the first semester and then grade a little more hard in the second semester you know you would want to choose the marking period option if you're just going to be you know the same and consistent throughout the whole year then the year is the easiest once you set up year or marking period you can't go back and change so that's the key um, calculation method if you hover over that there's a great help Hover over it, it should work. We saw it, there it goes. You know, these are your three choices in your calculation. You know, are you gonna use total points with weight? Are you gonna use just plain total points? Or are you just gonna use percentages? Those are your three choices. If you wanna see how, you know, the gradebook's gonna help you. It's gonna do all of this automatically for you. So you're setting it up, telling the gradebook how to perform, how to handle your, your numbers. So calculation method, just hover over it and that screen pops up, you know, choose which option you want. You're going to come over here to edit. Right, these are going to be all those assignment types that your principals have already entered for you to choose from. You may not need all those assignment types. Maybe all you need is the lab and the test. You know, maybe all you need is um, class participation and homework, you know. You're going to have the choice to decide which of these assignment types you want to use in your class. Select them with a check mark. Say apply. Thanks. So, um, am I using assessment? Uh, I guess not, but I am using, I think it's because I've already put grades in here. But each of these drop down menus, this one will work, the major paper. You know, the principals are also setting up your grade scale. Are you going to use a four point, five point? I'm not even sure what you guys are using. But this is an example. For each of your assignment types that you are choosing, you're going to have an option here to choose which kind of um, grading scale you're going to use. And then you can weight them differently. So if your paper's worth more than your class participation, that's where you can enter those kinds of numbers. It's a good idea if um, this number here, number two drop, you know, if you're the kind of teacher that says, all right, I'm gonna give you 10 assignments and I'm gonna drop the lowest grade on one of those. That's great, you can certainly do that. I would just wait to put that number in until later in the semester, later in the quarter, because it's gonna skew that cumulative grade. So if you're displaying the cumulative grade and the you know, students already turned in two assignments and doing great, they're gonna think, wow, fantastic but then you know after eight assignments it might not be wow and so it might get a skewed kind of reflection of where they're at so if you're going to drop a grade for a student out of so many numbers of assignments then wait to enter that number till later okay that's all under edit setup oh yeah and if you scroll down under here it's going to have a list of your other sections so this is going to work for your other sections you can share it, which is great. Okay? Or you can have each section be different. It's just really up to you, the teacher. Okay, so all of that was in the grade book. If, if each quarter is the same, do we still need to go into each quarter? Or can we share it by quarter? I think that if you chose that year, that's why it would be the easiest. If you chose the marking period, then you're going to have to go to each each quarter. You may have to do this on this on here. So you took this all up and you had this section weighted. So say like in your test section, you have your normal test and then you have like your final, which is weighted more. When I go to create an individual assignment, can I tell the program that's worth two? Oh, right. Okay. Right. 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 That's when you think. So. Okay. Right. So yeah, if, um, right here even from your gradebook, you know, go ahead and add an assignment, <coughs> right? Remember when you add assignment, even from the gradebook, 
Tammy and Pam are back there. I can see some chatting. And you scroll down when you're adding that assignment, right? So it's the fact. Right in okay. here. Exactly. Okay. So it's the Pencil. And you always have reports on the far right. Don't forget your reports. If you need to run a report of some kind, it's there for you. Let's go back to the assignment page. Let's go ahead and talk about um, assessments. You <coughs> made an online test. That's what the assessment is. Assessment is an online test. When you add a new assessment, it's just like an assignment, right? Give it a name, um, decide how many points is this test worth. Typically it's going to be 100. And you want to give um, an equal status to each question. Each question is worth 10 points, maybe. Or do you want to um, assign a percentage of points per question? You have those choices. Do you want to give the students a limited number of minutes to take this exam, this test online, right? 45 minutes, maybe. How many times do they get to take it online? You know, can they retake it? Maybe they take it once and you have a little more discussion, and then you can have them retake it again. Questions, how do they appear on the screen? Do you want the student to answer one question and then say next and answer the next question? You know, show one picture of, I mean, show one question at a time? Or do you want them to just see all the questions at once and they can scroll up and down and answer, you know, however they want? That's what that dictates. If it is a test and they're taking it in your class, you probably want to randomize those questions. That <coughs> Mary can't see what Johnny's doing in front of her and answer the same answer. You know, everybody's going to have a different question on their screen at a different time. Do you want the students to be able to start a test and then come back later and finish? Or do you want them to just do it all right now? That's what that mandates. Um, there's your assignment types again. It's going to be a test or a quiz. And then all the other pieces, just like we saw with assignments, give it an abbreviation, give it your factor points and such. And then, you know, do you want to share this? You know, with the other sections. Maybe the same quiz will work for everybody. You can certainly do so. So this is all the same as what we discussed in the assignment piece. You would save and add the questions. We're not going to do that because I already have too many tips on this example. But let's go ahead and take a look at... I have a sample down here at the bar. Where did it go? That one. Yeah, we don't want to go there yet. We want to go to the pencil. Even I get confused sometimes. All right. So when you save and say you want to add the questions, that's your first option when you add an assessment. It looks like your resource board, um, it looks like your bulletin board, it looks like your topics, you know, same idea. Things over here on the left, right? You could add an essay question, you could add a fill in the blank, multiple choice, or a true false. Each one of these question types for the online test has a little different um, interface. Um, we have tabs here, we have an introduction. It's a good idea to go ahead and say, all right, here's the test on such and such and such. You're gonna have 45 minutes. Please take your time. You'll be able to go back and forth. You know, whatever you wanna put in your introduction, go ahead and put it in there. And then you click on the questions. This is where you would add an essay. The system is not gonna be able to grade your essay questions. You're just gonna pose a question and then you're gonna have to read them and make your own grades, right? But you can certainly have a limit you know, so the character counts, you know, how much of that you want to give the students. You could certainly add some media to any of these questions if that would help them understand something. If you have a photo, if you have a short video or something, you want them to look at and review and then respond. A fill in the blank, right? You're gonna put your question in and the fill in the blank and then your answers for the fill in the blank, you could be kind, you know, because sometimes students don't know the exact spelling, especially if it's a scientific term or something, right? Somebody's last name, you know, as long as they get close, you're happy. So go ahead, when you have a fill in the blank question, you know, account for maybe a misspelling. 
and, and allow some students, you know, the system's going to automatically grade a fill in the blank test question. So give the system some options, you know, that the right answer could be. Same thing with the multiple choice. You know, if you're giving the student a question here, uh, multiple choice, you could have more than right, one right answer on your multiple choice. You know, you just want to make sure that the student absorbs the material and gets the concept. So you can have as many correct answers as you want, or you could have just one correct <coughs> answer if that's what you're going for. And then the true and false, you know, that's the black and white. Either it's right or it's wrong. Um, so in this program, you have to create each question that doesn't allow for imports from other programs. Because we use exam views through our literature, we can't import questions, right? We can't do that? Right. That would be a, yeah, that would not be a good use of this. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is more, I guess, for straightforward. I was just wondering if you Yeah. And as you're building your, your online assessment, you can always preview it. Down here at the bottom, there's this preview button. Right, this is what the student's version is. All right, here's my test. This is your introduction. You can begin, right? This is one question at a time kind of look. You know, they can certainly move forward. I don't know that answer. I don't know that answer either. All right, keep going. <laughs> right, they can choose. That's, that's kind of the perspective of what the student sees and then they would submit their answers. Are you sure? They can always go back, you know, double check your work kind of if you put a time limit on your exam, it would show too, you know, at the very first introduction. You only have 45 minutes, you know. Take your time, but you have 45 minutes. Okay, you can go back. You can always edit if you want. That was just the preview mode. You can always edit the settings on your assessment. Again, that's the same window you see when you first initially add, right? You change the dates and such. And then here's just a little tally. You have four questions. How far are you along in the process? Let's go back to assignments. It's thinking, I know. Um, so you've, you've built this assessment, this online quiz, this online test. Your students have taken it. Now there's a lot of analytics for you. Again, the software is going to grade those three types of questions. The true, false, the multiple choice, the short answer. Essays are up to you. Let's pat that computer and tell it it's okay. <laughs> oh, it's thinking. There we go. Um, yeah, scroll down. As the students take the test, as the test is graded, where did it go? Um, right, you can click on the blue words over here. Now we can go there. And this will be your analytic information. You can also come here and start scoring. You know, if it was an essay, you could actually, oh no, you can't. This would be all your results. And I picked a test with no results. <laughs> Maybe it was Mito. Something, yeah. Let's check out. That's that's not really a test, is it? Uh, failing, failing, failing. Let's try this one. Test cells and cubes. Could it be? Could it be? There we go. <laughs> um, you can see the average grade, right? It's all been graded. We gave everybody the same whole score for whatever reason. You can certainly change that. This is also on your gradebook, this little drop-down feature. You know, if everybody does well on the class participation, just give them all 100 or give them all 85 or whatever. You could certainly do that just by clicking on this little drop-down menu there. They're talking. Sorry. Sorry. Wait, okay. Where do you want me to go? This little drop-down menu. Right, you can, you can certainly put in, you know, a score and just give everybody the same score. You can come in here and score everybody differently. I'm trying to remember which test shows all my results. It's not this one. We go back. My demo site's in transition. Maybe um, we're looking for a test that's been graded. Is it this one? That's an online submission. That's a paper. And we haven't, let's try naming that cell. 
that's the one. As your students take the test and as the results start getting calculated, you have this detailed question breakdown. It's a great analytic tool, help you decide. Detailed question breakdown. <laughs> They're multitasking back there. You know, it's a great tool to help you decide, was I fair? You know, did I pose that question? And you know, maybe all the students misunderstood. And maybe it's a question that I need to readdress. So it's just there for you. The detailed question breaks on any online quiz you have. You can certainly come back and see exactly how students performed and where they need to dwell again. I was going to ask how bonus points play into this. So say you gave them a quiz or there was a homework assignment and someone got 100, but then they also got the bonus point. Correct. How would that factor? Um, that's a great question. I knew the answer. I know you can give a, an assignment or a test extra credit, but I don't know. That's a great question, and I don't have the answer. I'm sorry. That might be. Is that something like when you enter into the grade book, you enter one above max or one above? I mean, right. Can you put like 101 out of 100? Will allow the grade book? No, we can go to the help topics. That's true. So if you're up for it says faculty here and you go to on record or on campus it gives you this little question mark here in a circle in a circle and this is where you can look up help on subjects like that so you can type in bonus points I don't think that's going to come up but, but yeah try it you might have to be more simplified and just say test um, the scores. Yeah, we have some options here. You know what? I have um, people that might know. I'll just write that question down and then Pam can send out some information on Tammy. Great questions. This is good. Makes us all the better. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have a question. So in talking about the online testing, saying you assign an essay question, which clearly you have to go in and provide feedback. Can you provide feedback through the program? Like are there, you know, things where you can make comments on their essay inside the test, or how do you provide the feedback to them through the online test? Um, if you have an essay question, you I'm picturing an essay question. You could only you could put a feedback like in that comments when you add the grade. Okay. Right in that comments area. Yeah, it's kind of limited in that capacity. Okay. Right. We also have let's that's a good segue. Let's go ahead and look at adding a discussion, a graded discussion. That's what this is discussion. It's not that discussion I showed you for the topic where a teacher can just post something on the topic page and students reply. Adding a discussion from the assignment area is actually a graded piece and that might be more useful for your purposes. Again, title and pose your question, right? Do you want to share the results of these um, answers with the rest of the class? You can choose to do that, right? Maybe you want to go ahead and share the students comments with the class, but wait until they compose their own original thought first, right? They can't see what other people wrote until they've shared their own experience or their own answer. Same kind of idea if you want to give them a link or a download to help prepare them or even embed in this example, right? Select your assignment type. All of this should look exactly the same. So let's go ahead and cancel out of here. We've added that discussion. That's what, um, let's pick a discussion. Let's pick um, the pencil here. Pencil. Oh, you guys are challenging me here. Let's look at the actual, over here in the blue. I don't think that one has anything. I think the T cell, let's see if that one does. 
So here we are. We pose a question as a teacher to the class. This is a graded discussion, right? Please post your response. Um, scroll down. Right? This is the student's response to the question. Notice that I've got an I displaying. That means it's displaying to their classmates. So I could certainly click on that I, you know, and that response could be hidden. No one can see it at the time. This isn't really like an essay. It's more like a, a graded response. But you as the teacher could comment either to the individual student on their reply and say, I hid this because we didn't think it was appropriate or something. Or you can make a, a response and say, you know, these are all wonderful comments. I think all of your answers are correct. Let's go ahead and dive into something. So all of these could actually be graded by response. You can pose a question and have people, have your students respond and then give them a grade on each one of their statements here. Right, you could again, give a student a specific response back or you can give a whole class a response back in general. So that's what the discussion does and it is graded. It is part of your grade book. We also have can you go back to assignments? Yeah. We have an online submission, right? You've asked the students to actually turn in an essay on their, on your assignment. Let's find one of those online submissions. Let's, yeah, let's try mitosis, this top one here. These are actually um, the question the assignment was to watch this video and then write an essay and such. So here's the links I provided for the student, downloads I provided for the student in preparation for the assignment. All right, I can mark the grades here. Let's just click here. Cookie crumbs work just as much as the back button. Let's find that graded discussion. Where is it? Online submission of pencil. Mm -hmm. That's not it either. Dang it. Where is um is it the Yeah, let's go back here. I was in the right place. I'm just confusing myself. If I click on, I can tell that um, Meg did not turn it in, that's why her name is red. But Amy, my star student has, she got a hundred. Yay, that's what I wanted to show you. <laughs> right? Amy has submitted her essays for example, online, I can come in here and annotate. Hopefully this will load, exactly. So it could be a draft, you know, it could be, you know, a major paper. You just have them submit what they have so far, and then you, the teacher, can come in here and, and, and make all kinds of marks on their paper online. You go back up. Right, I have um, comment option right here. So I can highlight, right, I can make notes on the side, I can draw, you know, just usual online kind of things. I can make all kinds of notes, yeah. So this is an example of you've asked the student to submit something online, a paper, a draft, right? And they submit it, then you can come in as the teacher and actually start making notes and indicate where more work is needed or comment. Hey, perfect. So I don't know. You have those options. I don't think hopefully one of those options works for you. And again, I can tell this student submitted it, what date and what time. These ones in red, they completely missed it, never turned it in. So this is an online submission, right? Create an assignment. The assignment is submit to me a paper. When they submit that paper to you, then you can come in here and annotate. We got here by just clicking on their name. And then you can put a grade, and if it's right, you can be graded. Now, I know there's a lot of other options available, and the school's working on it. We have Turnitin, actually. They're working on that. How much, how's our time? Do we have time to show that? Yes. Now would probably be a good time. We're five to 11, so we have Wow, right now, huh? Do you still have that QRL, Kim? Oh, okay. 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 Oh, okay.
was showing you um, how Turnitin works. You know, Turnitin is a, it, you know, this is a demo site. We don't have, you know, we haven't purchased that item. Oh, Christian has purchased Turnitin, but we, you know, demonstrators, we don't have Turnitin. And so I just have to share videos. I can't really show a real live version of it. says it's happy hunt. At any rate, if this doesn't work, we're still gonna, I'm gonna, um, Pam and Tammy will get all these on that resources page with the Blackboard information, the same that is in your handout, so it will be available at some point before you. Yeah, I can't get it to place through the thing up there. Assignments K 12. So there's two kind of learning tools. You know, we have Turnitin, and that's the plagiarism software, right? You can check and make sure this is actually a student's original thought. And there's also Soft Chalk. Anybody using Soft Chalk? Are you guys using Soft Chalk? No. So yeah, this is going through Soft Chalk first, you know, showing you that all these grades. You know, if you're using Turnitin, if you're using Soft Chalk, it's going to be feeding into the gradebook for you. Yeah. So here you are, you're on assignments, right? You're going to add an assignment. When you add an assignment, and we have that um, Turnitin on, you're going to have a learning tool there, and you select turn it in, all right, so on campus submission, you're going to select turn it in, continue on, go ahead and give the same weights and such, and then you're going to see like a little prompt here, right, you as the teacher, if you want to use turn it in, you may have to first initially set up how you want turn it in to respond, after you do that, then that turn it in piece is going to show you the analytics, yes? When a student submits an online submission, a paper, and turn it in is looking at it, it'll show you exactly, you know, was this original thought? How much of it was original? Maybe they plagiarized just a sentence, maybe the whole thing was plagiarized. So essentially you're having turn it in grade the paper first, right? And then you can get the result, what turn it in sizes is um, happened. You can certainly set up some other settings here for Turnitin, exactly how you want it to respond to papers coming in from your students. So this is an example, that was the student's document and then the Turnitin was evaluating exactly the content in there. Kind of a weak demo, huh? But you get an idea, maybe. It is an option if you want to use Turnitin. The thing with Turnitin and Soft Chalk, you can't do both together. You have to choose one or the other. So it's showing you if you use Soft Chalk, you can certainly have that option, right? It's kind of integrated right into the um, software. The student doesn't have to go out to another site to see your information in Soft Chalk. They could actually just stay within um, what we've been watching today and all that information gets brought in. They don't have to sign in to you know, these pieces. So we have a lot of learning tools that are available and it just depends on what Hope Christian has a subscription to and which ones you can use. So they will add the option for Turnitin? They definitely are adding the option for Turnitin. Okay, so it's not there yet? It's not there yet. Okay. Once it is there, I'm sure you're going to hear about it and then there'll probably be some help and support. So, <coughs> yep. The key is, you know, all these pieces, you don't have to travel outside of the website. You're logged into Hope Christian's, you know, assignment area, and you can just stay there. Students, you know, it's a seamless experience. They don't have to go somewhere else. They're just right here. 
Okay. Yeah, since the audio is not working, I guess we can go back to a demo site. So here, we're on our class page. We talked about assignments. We talked about the grade book. This is all pertaining to this one specific class, right? Each class you teach has its own page. In the drop-down menu under My Day, you have what we call Assignment Center. Kind of like the calendar, it's going to be an aggregate of all your classes. So you can look at things either like for a specific class by going to that class page and then going to assignments. Or you can go to the assignment center and see all of your assignments for all of your classes. And yeah, Kendall has, what was it, English? There we go. Spelling. No, spelling. 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 So here's a list of you. If Kindle or any of you would prefer to see this in a grid view, you can travel through time. This is really a cool option. Go back. Oh, yeah, right here. Let's say you're looking at it visually. Here's all your assignments, right? Rather than a list, you're looking at the calendar view, and you're going, wow, I didn't really mean to put practicing word lessons over here. I meant to put it over here. You can click on any assignment and move it around on your calendar grid. Right, and it's going to prompt you, are you sure, kind of thing. You know, does this apply to all those other sections we're teaching? You can say yes or no. But that's kind of a nice feature on the calendar view. Once you start building your assignments out, you can see it in a more visual sense and then move things around. Okay, um, let's go back to the class page. I think if there's anything else. Um, these other pieces, course recommendations, grading, schedule. You know, your schedule is a schedule. You can always click on that, but you're just going to see your schedule. Um, the grading, that's actually the report card piece. I'm just here to show you about the grade book. Let's go ahead and be, maybe, can we be a parent and look at a grade book? I know my demo site, my parents have some grades. Peter is a, is a parent, you can actually go to parent. Here's a parent at your school. You know, they have children attending the Hope Christian, right? If it's one child, they'll just see the one child's name. If it's more than one child, they'll have a drop down to select which child they want to view. Oh, and my student Ben has no good book. <laughs> Let's be... Is there another able? Yeah, no, it was Meg, a feast, A-F-T. That's right, like that. Mrs. Meg, right there. Meg has students at the school, she has two. There's that drop down. I want to see what George is up to. George is in the third grade, I can see that. I can see our attendance. And then here's George's grade book so far this year. Right. It's the same look you had when you were calling up students or parents to your guests from the grade book. It's just notice that the comparison with the class is gone. But it's the exact same view. This is what a parent sees with the grade book that you've created. All right. Um, and, and a parent can move around and go to each of their child's classes as needed. They can see the teacher's names. All that kind of stuff is the same as what you're seeing. Right? They can see the comments you made, they can see the grades you assigned. Okay. Um, I, we haven't talked about attendance. I know attendance isn't it set up in the upper school yet, is that because we don't have schedules? And, correct. Right. But we could be Peter, or we could be, we could show Kendall, I guess. Oh, yeah, it just won't work everybody. <laughs> So here we are, we're on, oops, go back. You guys know where you're going. These guys are going, what? <laughs> so on my day, remember we said my day, schedule performance is your command center. You're gonna have your schedule, once it's entered, listed here in this area. And it's gonna list your um, classes you're responsible for. You're gonna have a take attendance drop down menu over here, right? If you click on that, here's your roster. Certainly mark everybody present or, you know, maybe you know, 
the principals are setting up exactly what menus you're going to see from here. This is the elementary menu. But you can see this is how you will be taking attendance. You could certainly indicate if class was canceled, you know, if it was a snow day and nobody came. Something like that. You could put in a little note, you know, if it was tardy, you can put in a note on the side. Okay, they came in 10 minutes late or 15 minutes late, something like that. But that's how the attendance for your class is going to work. You're going to want to be on my day, schedule performance. It's going to have a list of your classes, and then you're going to have a little um, drop-down menu there on the right. Okay. Easy enough? 